Yeah, and speaking of foreign influence, uh, the Republicans are going after uh, BlackRock as well. The House Republicans are investigating uh, whether or not the investment firm has been putting money into Chinese companies uh, that are involved in uh, either human rights abuses or it, with, uh, in, in backstopping the People's Liberation Army, the Chinese military. Uh, what, what's your what's your read on the this latest move from uh, House House Republicans, Emily? Yeah, this is really interesting because if we put uh, the next set of elements up on the screen, the specific allegations are pretty fascinating. Um, you would think like people would have more shame than BlackRock seems to. This is the, the House Select Committee on China led by Mike Gallagher. The committee found that BlackRock across just five funds, as Philip Wegman of Real Clear Politics reports, invested more than 429 million in companies uh, that the committee says pose a national security risk to the US. Now, is that just bloated neoconservative language uh, from the committee? I don't know. If we dive in and keep uh, going on, on this tweet thread, they have the receipts. They have some really specific receipts, actually. Uh, we're talking about aviation companies. Uh, we're talking about aircrafts for the People's Liberation Army. We're talking about uh, cell phone telecommunications infrastructure in the CCP spy apparatus. If you're watching this, you see these all listed out on the screen. Um, this is Morgan Stanley, not, not BlackRock, everything that I just listed out. Uh, we can then move to the BlackRock slide uh, that we have prepared here um, that Phil tweeted out of the uh, screenshots. So when it comes to BlackRock, also Aviation Industry Corporation, Morgan Stanley there as well. Um, they are making aircraft for the PLA. That includes, as the committee says, the fifth generation J-20 fighter jet um, and a munitions company, a Chinese munitions company that produces artillery shells for the People's Liberation Army. Now, whatever you think of the United States policy towards China or China's policy towards the United States, it is like it, 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 the likelihood that those artillery shells could be used against American uh, sailors, members of the American military in the years ahead, is is not that low. Uh, there's there's a, a likelihood, sadly, that's where we are, uh, that the very artillery shells that BlackRock is funneling people's investments into uh, could be used against people in the United States of America. This is, again, an investigation that the select committee has opened. I think those receipts are pretty strong. Uh, obviously, Morgan Stanley and BlackRock are denying um, that they've done anything wrong. Ryan, what do you make of, uh, I keep referring to them as the receipts, like we're at a Real Housewives yeah. reunion, um, but what do you make of the evidence the committee's presented? I mean, the whole, the whole thing feels a little schizophrenic to me because our, eco our economies are completely entangled with each other as a direct result of American bipartisan foreign policy to make China, you know, to give China permanent, uh, what, what do they call it? No, permanent normal relations or a normalized, PNTR, permanent normalized trade relations, uh, which was came in the late 1990s as a, that was a you know, kind of a Clinton, Clinton agenda item that was backed heavily by Republicans. Uh, we are, we produce, you know, most of our uh, consumer goods <laughs> over, there, uh, and they, they, you know, they purchase enormous amounts of our of our debt. Uh, but that, but then we, uh, then we want to, uh, then, then, and we do draw some lines around, you know, what U.S. companies can invest in and and not invest in. But now the House Republicans want to take it even further and say, well, okay, uh, this isn't specifically outlawed, uh, but if you look, you know, it is a company that has connections to producing, you know, ammunition, uh, which you know, legitimately could be used against you know, Americans in Taiwan at some point, which, and, and I say it feels schizophrenic because it's like, all right, well, look, if that's our policy, then then ban it. Mm -hmm. uh, if, uh, or if we're really worried about uh, Chinese shells, you know, landing on the heads of American soldiers, better thing to do would be to make sure that that never happens, that the Chinese never fire shells on American soldiers. Because I don't, I don't think the kind of American soldier is going to be, you know, that much more upset if he gets killed uh, by a BlackRock funded munition or a, a munition that was, you know, funded by, you know, some other fungible resources that China put toward its munitions factory. I think primarily uh, the soldier would just prefer not to have been killed in the war. And so I think everything needs to revolve around the question of how do we avoid uh, in a completely unnecessary war? Like it, it's it's talked about in Washington and nowadays almost as if th this this is destined to happen that nobody has any choice that we're headed towards this conflict but this would be a war of choice 
Like there are other options that are available. And so then the question is, does this type of stuff make war more likely or make war less likely? Uh, is it, does this set us up uh, to be, you know, to have more independence from China or does it put us on a collision course uh, for war? And I don't know exactly the answer to that, but I think it, I think that there is something incoherent about the way that we're approaching it here. Uh, what, 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 what would you have them do, you think, if, uh, if House Republicans could write, write the law and kind of force Biden's hand to sign it? Yeah, that is a really good question because um, it gets into, you know, when when Donald Trump, for instance, what was referred to as the, the Muslim ban, tried to identify problematic countries that people shouldn't be traveling to. And if you're just going to, it's like when they, they tried to do this with TikTok, one of the TikTok bills um, didn't actually mention China specifically. It was like broadly trying to define <laughs> a hostile foreign nation. And then you get into uh, a lot of different questions about different countries and where there are competing interests, by the way. You can look Look at the way that uh, people who talk a big game about China look at Saudi Arabia, for instance. Uh, and there's a really serious, I think, question of how you decouple. You know, how do you how do you deal with a country that is implicated in uh, sort of intentional, coordinated government uh, human rights abuses on your average citizen, um, let alone in Xinjiang, for instance? Um, how do you how do you deal with that um, while also not you know decoupling in a way that that starts a war. Obviously, Taiwan and chips, a huge question on the table. Obviously, BlackRock is going to look at the fact that Intel is here in D.C. right now pouring millions of dollars into a lobbying effort to allow them to continue to have big business in China that obviously will boost the Chinese government, the spying apparatus, et cetera, et cetera. And BlackRock is saying, we are you know, trying to raise money for American pension funds. Uh, what's, what makes us so different from Intel? What makes us so different from uh, Walmart or wherever else um, if we're we're all sort of boosting the Chinese economy, which is fundamentally dependent on the American economy. They need us. Uh, and that's why this trade war has been so bitter. And, and if we fully decouple from China and there, there's an argument that there's sort of there's a desperation that leads to a potential invasion of Taiwan, which is obviously, as our government has said, our red line that, you know, involves a, a hot conflict. I mean, this is it is an absolute mess. And basically, it's the the uh, result of elite mismanagement over the course of, of decades that we're in this situation now, and nobody should have any confidence whatsoever that that's going to get better to prevent uh, a hot conflict where actual lives are on the line uh, because they're the ones that have screwed this up for decades. And now we're in a position where it's like, okay, so we're just going to, uh, you know, posture about the evils of the CCP and the PLA, and a lot of us can agree on those things. Um, but you know, what what does that look like? You know, are, are we going to then take on Intel? Are we going to take on other companies? Like, how do you decouple in that way? Um, I think obviously there's a, a difference between you know Walmart and people who are uh, investing in munitions, investing in aircraft, I, I think that's obviously glaringly should be something that executives are ashamed. Like Larry Fink shouldn't, for many reasons, but this one particularly, uh, feel comfortable walking into like cocktail parties in Manhattan or L or LA, like in a, a healthier society, he would be, a, he would be a pariah because of all of this. Um, but at the same time, to your point, like there is an, a fundamental incoherence too. Yeah, and it also feels like with the the, the co increasing climate collapse that we're we're seeing, you know, what how many three weeks of 110 plus degrees in in Phoenix, for instance, and that just that's just one part of the world. Uh, that it's pathetic for kind of the world leaders uh, to be this close to like some type of a hot conflict between the two uh, biggest economies, rather than sitting down at the final stages of of negotiations around you know, how we're going to, you know, m maintain the inhabitability of, of this planet. But I guess, you know, this is, uh, you know, that would be my ideal world, but that's not the one uh, that we're in now. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at breakingpoints.com.